Hi guys, it's Angie Bell with My Fairy Treasures. Okay guys, I'm coming at you with more of these um, pocket envelopes or these things that you can call as stuffed envelopes. And I've never discussed what to do with these. And um, I don't know why I never said that. You guys, you can do anything with them. You can, um, these type of stuff, these type of envelopes that we're making, these pocket envelopes, you can stuff all kinds of, look how much room you have in there. You can do all kinds of stuff. I have things stuffed like, um, like a lot of like my bits and pieces that I like to collage with, like uh, book pages and napkins and all that. I have one filled with that. I have them filled with um, little die cut pieces. Um, I have them filled with all kinds of stuff. Um, one I have filled with just all napkins. Um, some Diane Reevely cutouts. I have another one filled with a bunch of p uh, pieces that I like to use in my um, my collage or reverse collage. So. Or you can use them as Happy Mail and make them into stuffed envelopes and stuff a bunch of goodies in them, which is what I'm, I'm about to do for someone. Stuff a bunch of goodies in one of them um, and give it as a stuffed envelope. So there's so much stuff you can do with these, you guys. Okay, so I wanted to mention that because I really haven't talked about what to do with these. But um, this is the one we're going to make today. Um, I love this. is actually one of my favorite ones. I love this image right here. Um, the image is called Robin's Egg Soap. And I got the images off of Google. I Googled these, and then I printed them out, and I cut them out, and then I uh, decoupage them on here. But first, I do a mixed-media background, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, as far as making the actual pocket envelope uh, to make this whole thing like this, um, I, um, I'll i link my video below that I show you how to make this. It's so simple, you guys. Really, really simple. So that's what the back looks like. Here's this one. It's this, almost the same one. So this one, I've, <coughs> I have a bunch of, like... Um, magazine cutouts and stuff in it see for my deck up for my um mixed media with decoupaging and or collaging and reverse collaging okay and then the back of it looks like that and then these are just some of the other ones we've done recently just to kind of show you and plenty of room to put a bunch of goodies and i did we did i did this one Plenty of room. Put a bunch of goodies in there. And then this one or the other one I'm going to give away to somebody. So I don't know if I'm doing this one or this one. One or the other. I'm not sure yet. Okay. And then there was this one. And I have videos for all of these. Again, this is a cup. This has a bunch of um, things for uh, collage in here. Okay, and how I did these techniques, this is done with Diane Reevely, a lot of Diane Reevely techniques and, um, and her paints, and I show you, I have videos if you just look below on how I did all that. Okay, so we're going to make this one today, also we're going to do, we're going to do two at a time today, because I want to make that one with these images, and then you guys, so excited, I want to make one with these images. I'm so excited. This is going to be, I just, um, okay. I just put, um, a video up of, um, a digital paper pad that I'm selling in my Etsy shop and it's called, um, unicorn tears. And, um, my next one I think I want to do is more like a pastry shop, like a uh, French pastry shop. And the images will be this type of a feeling. So I think that's what I want to do. And these type of colors, of course, these are my, I love these kind of colors. So I'm going to make two at a time so I can put these things on there. Okay, so let me move this out of the way. Um, let me come out with my camera a little bit more. Okay. Okay, so I have two of these done. i got to move my drink. I have two of these um, pocket folders done. Here's this. Here's this. Here's the little pocket folder right there. Let me turn it this way so you guys can really look at it. So here's the little thing where you can stuff everything in. Okay, so what I did first, and I did it to two of them. So I have one, and then I have another, okay? So so I can work two at a time. Um, I like working two at a time, you guys. You get, it's double the fun, and you get double done, okay? So um, what I did first is I um, collaged on here um, everything, book pages, um, some really cool paper of another language that I'm not really sure about, but I found this book and I collaged that on, um, music note paper. And I also did map 
some map stuff I got from Hobby Lobby, and then we did some napkins. And what I do is I put it all on with um, Elmer's glue, watered down. I don't put it on top just because I don't want to seal it on top, right? I did seal it on top of the napkins. So we're doing a little bit of a we're doing a little bit of a um, a test because what I did then then what I usually do is I put matte uh, matte medium on the whole thing, right? Well, I'm not doing that anymore because I discovered that clear acrylic matte coating is the same thing as matte medium. So after I got done doing all of this, I clear coated both sides with clear acrylic matte coating. Okay, and this one is by Treehouse Studios, and I got it at Hobby Lobby. But any clear acrylic matte coating will work, I'm sure. Okay, so I did that there, and then I did that on the on the other side. Okay, so um, now this is like we have matte medium on there, so this is now a paintable surface. And even though I used uh, Elmer's glue right on top of the napkin to glue this down, I put uh, the white uh, matte coating on here. Um, so I think that this will still be a paintable surface. So that's a little bit of a, of a test. Okay, so we, I need some baby wipes, which I have right here. Um... We're going to do the colors of this one first. So that's going to be some Robin's Egg Blue, which I just love Robin's Egg Blue. Come out. Is this... Oh, you know what? Oh, man. That has paint on it already. Let's get out a new one. Sorry about that, guys. Just a second. All right, I'm going to have to remove that. Just a minute. Okay, before it gets into the white glue. Okay. All right, there we go. Throw that over there. So we have this paint here. Um, we need this. This flesh, it's called flesh. I like to get my paints from Michaels, especially when they're on sale. These craft smarts, when they're three or two or three for a dollar, when they're three or four for a dollar, I would go in and buy a bunch if I was you and get three colors deep. So if it's a blue, get three levels of three different shades of blue, three different shades of um, whatever color. Especially take advantage of that sale. This color right here, I love. It's called. Um, ochre yellow ochre and the the one i love is by a uh, folk art and you can get folk art for a decent price at walmart um i think it's like only a dollar and then their um apple barrel paints there are like 50 cents so this type of craft paint you can do pretty well on price okay that is really thick that folk art so i need to calm that down a little bit. I need to thin it out a little bit. Just a second. Thin that out a little bit. Some water. That folk art paint using it that thick can be really good for certain things. So, okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with baby wipes. And baby wipes will really smear on the color and leave it nice and translucent because like, we wanna see all of the um, stuff through it so there's like layers for the background. We wanna see all this stuff in the background. So baby wipes are like perfect for that. Let me just spray my baby wipes a little bit with water. Let me set them just a little bit more. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this yellow ochre color. Look how it just spreads the paint on really nicely. And you can also blend really nice with the baby wipes. You guys, look how great of a job that matte medium is doing. You can really, it just makes a nice matte surface, just like matte medium does. And I'm sorry, it's not matte medium, it's um, clear acrylic paint. Clear acrylic spray paint. <gasps> get it right, Angela, get it right. Ooh, this beige color over here is kind of like weird. Hopefully that works. Yeah, it still does. Cool. It kind of started separating. It's been in my stash for like a long time. I need it to shake it up a little bit more. There we go. That's 
coming out a little bit better. Okay, and we'll throw a little bit more blue here. And we'll throw a little bit more of this, this color right here. Okay, so I think that looks really cool. And let's do the other side. Hopefully I've been in frame the whole time. Yes, I have been. All right, let's just see what, ha what paint I have left on here. Yeah, I don't have enough on here. Okay, let's see what we have left on here. Add a little bit more. glue on here. Isn't this a quick way to smear paint everywhere? I love it. Okay, now I'm noticing on the napkin, it's a paintable surface, but, but it's not as paintable as if I wouldn't have used that Elmer's glue over it. But it's still, color is still going over it, so I shouldn't say that. It still works, so it still works good. Yeah, it does. Never mind. So if you decide to do that, Use the Elmer's glue to decoupage your napkin and then put the clear acrylic paint over it. You're still going to be good. Okay. Add a little bit more of this blue on here. Okay, and then we'll add this color right here over here. Oh, you know what? I just did this to the wrong one. I wanted this stuff to go on the pink one. Oh, well. <laughs> Sometimes you mess up. Because see how there's pink in here? I wanted that to go on the other thing. Jeez, Angela. Sometimes. Anyway... We'll keep going. <laughs> okay, come out of here. This paint is so thick, this folk art. It's a thick paint anyway, so I think it's a little bit more thick because I've had it for a while. There we go. And let's get it going with a little bit of water. Okay, and we need a little bit more of this beigey color. Sure we're still in frame here okay so I'm gonna start rubbing some of this in okay let's rub a little bit get that out of the way rub a little bit over here and we'll rub a little bit in the center okay I love this technique with the baby wipe because it keeps it um, keeps the paint translucent so you can see through the paint so you can see what you have underneath it because we're creating a really pretty background and it looks pretty to have like like stained paper you know you're not covering it up um, with the acrylic paint completely you're just adding color to the to paper and still letting it see the images below which gives is going to give us a really nice background so just remember, this is a great technique for a lot of things when you're doing mixed media, just so you can have layers. The lighter coats of paint where you can see through them, it gives you more layers, which gives you a more um, in-depth background. And why am I not working on my, um, I need to be working on this one surface. Well, we'll do this for now. I have a shelf letter that I like to work on so I don't get this all messed up. Kind of too late for that. Okay. I just realized it right now. I'm like, what am I doing? Okay. 
Okay. Okay, we'll do this yellow right here. Okay. Okay, so we'll do this yellow here. It's not really yellow. Like I said, it's called, well, it's yellow, yellow ochre. I love it. And we'll put a little bit of the beige right there. It's a little bit too much beige all right here. We obviously need to break that up. We'll break that up with some blue right here. here in the center. There we go. Put a little more of that yellow ochre there and a little yellow ochre here in the center. Kind of break things up. Same thing here. You kind of can see what things need as you um, keep going. Okay. So that's what that looks on both of those sides. Okay. So now we're going to do our second one. And I'm going to pause you guys, pause it while I get the paints ready and while I get my um, shelf liner on this table. So I will be right back. Okay guys, we're back, we're all set up. I got my colors that are going to match these pieces that we're going to um, collage on, right? Okay, on the other one. And I got my baby wipes. Let's work for my palette over here. And when you spray that um, that acrylic matte um, coating on here, um, make sure you just do it outside because it has a it, you know it's a spray paint, so it has a smell. Like I still smell it right now, <laughs> kind of strong, but it's fine. This is if you want a dupe for matte medium because the cost of matte medium just gets like so crazy. Um, and I've heard a lot of people complain about that price. I mean, there's no reason that they need to be charging the price they charge for matte medium. It's like ridiculous. Um, but they do, so. Let's see what pink I like better. If I like this lighter pink, or I'm gonna use both. I like the I like them both. Okay, I have a darker pink and a lighter pink on here. So, uh, some people are like, "What's the difference?" <laughs> it's not like a huge difference, but it's a difference. Okay, and then we'll go with some pink or some beige. Before I dip it back in, I do see if there's a little bit of paint left still on here to use before you just go um, right back into the paint again. And if you want, with because you're using this baby white, you can blend the colors into each other. So that always looks really cool too. So you can get more of a blend. Um, go in this light pink color over here. Um. Trying to think of which way I want to go now. Okay, we'll go with the beige color. And I kind of always go right over the other colors next to it, like I said, so you can blend them into each other. I think that looks good. You can do it however you want. Cool. 
it's really pretty. All right, so let's go to the other side. Let me look at my time situation. Okay, we've got like four more minutes on this clock here. So hopefully we can get this finished. If my, if my, um, you guys all know if you're watching my videos for a while, if, um, I can only tape for like 25 minutes at a time. It's ridiculous. I don't understand why my husband has tried to, to reset my camera so that I can tape for an hour. And I don't know, it, it, it does it for 25 minutes and it turns off. It's just the way it was made. If I'd have known that, I wouldn't have bought this one. But anyway, besides that, this camera is awesome. I think it tapes beautifully. Um, so I like it, except for that. So anyway, and I don't want to go changing cameras because I've learned this camera. And I went and tried to change to a different camera. And oh my God, I just went ahead and just turned the camera. It was a nice camera. I mean, it wasn't cheap either. But I just went and took it back to the store. It was like too much for me to learn. I, You guys, I'm... I'm, 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 I'm pretty decent at doing art, but when it comes to like, you know, computer stuff, it takes me a while. Ooh, I'm not real good. That doesn't come easy to me whatsoever, which is why I haven't learned when, when YouTube got rid of the, uh, editing software, I was like so bummed because I finally got down the YouTube editor, which was so cool. I loved it. It took me a while to get that down, and then they changed it. And now it's like to learn another one is just like a nightmare to me. So, anyway. But I've thought about it, and I've thought, should I learn another editing software? But at the same time, it's kind of cool to have part one, two, three, and four, like I usually, like I've been doing, because in that way, you're not dedicated, you don't feel like you're dedicated to watching an hour long video. If you only want to watch 25 minutes, you can't. If you're like, I just want to see how, it, how it's going to end up, you can just go right to the end and see how it's going to end up. Um, or you can say, hey, I'll watch part two, one now, and two later, and three the next day, or however you want to do it. So it kind of gives you an option. So for right now, I think I'm not going to edit. I'm just going to do it like this. And then I don't have to take my time to learn to e a new editing software. It, that takes time. That crap takes time. I mean, for some people it probably doesn't, but it will for me. Also, to get the sides, like right here, because this is like where the, you can just take your uh, baby wipe and just wipe it inside of there, just to get that part done. Um, and there's some people on YouTube that, even crafters, they absolutely love the editing process. Like, they think it's so fun. I liked it for YouTube. Once I learned it, I loved it. I thought it was fun. But the learning it, oh my gosh. Such a nightmare for me. Okay. We all can't be good at everything. <laughs> that's one thing I'm not good at <laughs> computer crap okay so you guys we're going to go ahead and go to part 2 um, and I'm going to dry all these so now we have two of these done isn't this cool working like this two at a time especially if you're doing stuff for gifts um, then you're getting um, two gifts done at once and one of these are going to be a gift so anyway alright I will talk to you guys in the next one so go ahead and head over to part 2 see you in a minute